Adam Mount is with us now. He's a senior fellow with the Federation of American Scientists and the director of the Defense Posture Project. Uh, Adam, good morning to you. Thank you for being here. So we know that North Korea, they've been, as Paula said, they've been very open, very public about their displeasure with the U.S., particularly since President Trump walked away from the table at that summit in Hanoi. What does this launch tell you about the intentions of North Korea? Well, this is the first test in more than 500 days. Uh, it's the first launch since uh, diplomacy really started in earnest. And it's the latest in an escalating series of steps from North Korea to communicate that they're not willing to let talks stagnate indefinitely, that they're not willing to wait around forever. Uh, so we saw in the last couple of weeks and months that North Korea returned its Sohei satellite launch facility to operational status. We saw that they tested a shorter range tactical missile system. And they've talked repeatedly about the possibility of returning to uh, longer range missile tests. And so they're really signaling that they are uh, not willing to wait around forever, that they're trying to force a breakthrough in negotiations. I want to listen to something that President Trump said back in September regarding the U.S. and North Korea. You don't have any more nuclear testing. In fact, they're closing up a lot of the sites. You don't have rockets going up. You don't have missiles going up. Obviously, that has now changed as of this morning. Um, let's talk about the types of projectile, because you mentioned what they have done in the past. This is a short-range missile, missile, as we pointed out, or a short-range projectile, still trying to determine whether it was a missile. Uh, the assumption is that it wasn't particularly nuclear, but how confident are you that the U.S. knows that they have a really good gauge of what North Korea has in its arsenal? Well, we in the public still don't know precisely what was tested. It could have been something as simple as a, a, a salvo fire of rocket artillery. It could be a developmental test of a short-range ballistic missile system. What's clear is that it's designed not to be as escalatory as one of these long-range intercontinental ballistic missile tests. Uh, the U.S. Uh, military and intelligence services will have a pretty good read on the characteristics of this missile system. But it's not clear that this president is willing or able to discern specific facts about the missile system, uh, whether he is able to respond proportionately to this specific kind of test, to read the signals that they're sending, or whether he overreacts or ignores the launch altogether. Both would be bad for the future of negotiations. Okay, so we have President Trump who, who talked as well uh, recently about Kim Jong-un writing in beautiful letters and that they fell in love. And, and you juxtaposition that with a week and a half ago when Kim Jong-un was in Russia with Putin. And, and President Putin says Kim Jong-un asked him to mediate, so to speak, between the U.S. and Russia. What do you make of that? What is the status right now that we know between the U.S. and, and North Korea? Well, as you're sort of implying, the president has often seemed to operate on blind faith with respect to North Korea. Uh, he's sort of suggested that the, that the threat is over. He's said so explicitly. Uh, he's sometimes seemed to trust uh, Kim Jong-un that these missile tests are over completely, that the, th that the threat is over. Actually, what happened is that Kim Jong-un voluntarily paused uh, longer range intermediate and intercontinental range missile tests. And there was never an explicit agreement done to set expectations about what could be tested and what couldn't. So there's mm -hmm. always been this risk about they could test something ambiguous or something shorter range and fairly claim that they aren't uh, defying mm -hmm. their commitments to the United States. Uh, so a great deal now rests on the president's reaction. Does it warrant as some sort of action from the president? What we've seen this morning? Well, it certainly doesn't warrant a sort of kinetic or military response, uh, okay. certainly not military signaling. The key now is to send a signal to try to create this breakthrough in talks, to put a new kind of proposal on the table. Uh, just today, the United Nations said that after the worst harvest in, in a decade, that four in 10 North Koreans are facing an acute food shortage. Yeah. So one thing we could do is act to stave off a famine. Mm -hmm. Another thing we could do is to go back and clearly accept this North Korean proposal to codify this nuclear and missile test freeze okay. to avoid this kind of ambiguity in the future. All righty. Adam Mount, we appreciate your expertise on this. Thank you for taking time for us today.
Thank you. Mm -hmm.